Chapter 14, Point of Care Collection. <clears throat> Upon completion of this chapter, you'll be able to list two other terms that are synonymous with point of care testing, identify four analytes whose levels can be determined through point of care testing, describe the most widely used application of point of care testing, define quality assurance and its requirements in point of care testing. Introduction, terms used for Direct laboratory services include point of care testing or POCT, decentralized laboratory testing, on site testing, testing, alternate site testing. Terms used for direct laboratory services include near patient testing, patient focused testing, bedside testing. Point of care testing. Demand for point of care testing is increasing because rapid turnaround of laboratory test results is necessary. Uh, international focus on point of care testing through uh, IOS ISO 2287-0. Given that everything that is going on right now, there is a, a high demand for uh, POCT testing, all right? They mentioned the other day that they plan to, I originally said they plan to have a device to speed up the turnaround test for COVID-19. And then not even a statement later, later they said that these machines are already out and are being used in some states. I believe uh, Louisiana is supposed to get something like, I don't know, they're supposed, they're supposed to be sending some of these machines down here. Uh, these tests can process 20, uh, these machines will be able to process 20 tests an hour or 20 tests at a time uh, to get the results back. Um, so, yeah, there's that. I mean, point of care testing is 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 taking over. Okay, so you want to make sure that you that you are learning everything that you possibly can when it comes to POCT testing. All right. Specific reg regulations for POC testing lies under the domain of the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendments of 1988 are clear. Clear 1988. I thought for some reason I kept thinking in my head I said 1998. POCT instruments use small amounts of uncentrifuge blood specimens, use of skin puncture blood, urine, saliva, urine dipstick testing, blood glucose analysis. Analyzers, which are the meters, which you all have seen those in the lab. Uh, blood, blood gas and electrolyte analyzers, hemoglobin, uh, hemoglobin A, A1C, uh, coagulation testing, infectious disease testing for, for influenza. Frequently used POC tests, brain, natriuretic, uh, peptides, or BMP, blood creatinine, E, G, F, R, electrolytes and blood gas analysis, analytes, and glucose. Hemoglobin A1C, hemoglobin, um, infectious disease, example that would be HIV, influenza A and B, um, lactate, Lipids, 
So it's for testing your cholesterol, your HD cholesterol, or your LDL cholesterol, your pregnancy, triglycerides, white blood cell count, right. Right. glucose monitoring, diabetes mellitus, chronic diseases in which pancreas cannot produce enough insulin or cannot use insulin that it does produce. Insulin causes the glucose to be absorbed from the blood into the body tissue and then used for energy. A lack of insulin in patients with diabetes mellitus leads to increased blood glucose levels. Glucose analyzers and meters are small glucose, small glucose monitoring instruments commonplace in the home, nursing home, and hospital bedside. Appropriate, appropriate infection control and safety protocols must be followed. Please refer to table 14.1 in your textbook. All right. So what your typical uh, glucose monitor looks like. All right, so Hemacure. That's how you operate the, the Hemacure. All right. Another glucose. All right. Obtaining blood specimens for glucose testing, skin puncture. All right, you want to gather the equipment, safety automatic, glance it, identify patient properly, briefly explain the test to patients, clean your hands, put on gloves, select the site and cleanse with antiseptic, cleanse the skin with that alcohol wipe, allow the skin to dry. All right, we see that being done here. Gently massage the finger a few times from the base to the tip to aid in the flow, the blood flow. I right, see that being done there. Decide on which side of the finger to make the incision. Remember, you either either gonna be to the left or to the right of the finger, never directly in the middle, never on top or directly on the side. All right, remove the safety lancet from the protective paper, hold the patient's finger firmly with one hand and make a swift deep puncture with the retractable safety puncture device. All right, seeing that being done there. All right, wipe that first three drops of blood away with clean gauze. All right. Notice the difference here. I don't want y'all to be confused. All right, so if we just doing a regular capillary, first drop. Glucose, first three drops. All right, gently massage the finger from the base to the tip to obtain the needed drop of blood. Do not squeeze the finger. Apply HemoQ or MicuVent to drop to drop to the drop of blood. Excuse me. The correct volume is drawn into the uh, cuvet by capillary action. Capillary action doesn't mean you need a capillary tube. Capillary action is just the act of the blood filling up the tube. All right. Wipe away any excess blood from the si from the sides of the cuvet. All right. Place micro cuvet in, in cuvet holder and insert it into the photometer. Right. The laboratory test results is displayed automatically. And again, what that means is just as soon as you put the blood in there and it's in there, once it reads, it's going to give you it's going to give you your results. Right. Discard safety automatic lancet in the sharps container with biohazard label. Discard gauze, alcohol wipes, and gloves in the biohazard waste container. Wash or sanitize your hands. Okay. Glucose analyzes and meters carefully repackage, insert, and user manual user user manual, excuse me. Watch and an experienced healthcare professional perform the test. 
strictly follow daily quality control procedures, carefully record the results. All right? We talked about quality control um, somewhere around chapters two and four. No, we didn't really touch on it in chapter three because I believe that's when we talked about the law. So, quality control is important. Your quality assurance um, supervisor has the authority to shut the entire establishment down. All right? If, they, or have you all recommended that you be fired? All right? Because if there's a new procedure, of new procedure being put in, being put into place, it has to be first approved by the quality assurance, uh, quality assurance, uh, quality assurance personnel, excuse me. All right. From there, the training must be done with the rest of the staff. All right. Typically, as a training coordinator for their position uh, or whoever the leads are that are responsible for responsible for training new people. All right. Um, and if protocol is broken in the procedure, then what'll happen is, you know, so there'll be, you'll be reprimanded, um, possibly retrained before the rep, uh, before you're reprimanded. And if, you know, it just seems that after the, the train, multiple trainings and multiple write-ups that, Hey, you just keep messing keep messing up this procedure and it's doing a lot of people harm um then hey then we're just gonna go ahead and just let you go and that's again that's just being that's being on the nice end of it because again you are not guaranteed all those choices those chances i mean all right poc testing for hemoglobin um, a1c Glycated uh, hemoglobin, a reliable measure for uh, glycemic controls, glycemic control, excuse me. Um, HbA1c POC analyzers use drop of blood taken from the finger stick or venous sampler applied to reagent cartilage and inserted into desktop instrument. For analysis, quality and POC testing and uh, disinfecting POC analyzers, values monitored with quality control materials, electronic quality control or EQCs to test electronics, control materials analyzed so mean and standard deviations can be calculated. All right, now to understand what's going on here, Think back to math where we studied the mean, median, and mode. All right. From a uh, statistic standpoint of view, we can determine the outcome of something when we account for all the variables. Okay. So the mean on a on these devices would be the the average. Like, what is the average reading for this device, All right? Depending on, you know, if it's been dropped, if it's dirty, the batteries are about to die, on average, it's going to give this reading, regardless. The standard is what we need it to be. All right. The mean and the standard should be should complement one another. All right. So that's how that's how you think how you think about that. Now, based off the the calibrations, um, knowing the mean the the average reading of this device and knowing what we need what we need the specimen to read as. That's how we'll make the determination. Now, if we need a specimen to read one thing and it reads something totally different and that whatever the reading is, is not in conjunction with the standard 
or the mean, then we know, hey, this device needs to be recalibrated, recal okay? Because there's no way that, hey, this person levels could be this high um, and then they functioning like this or vice versa and have their levels be that low and they're functioning like this. All right, calculation on 20 to 30 control variables. Um, control values plotted on the chart under the appropriate date and the daily plots are drawn with a straight line. It's kind of what I just said. All right, so we're gonna take that, we'll take the average reading every day, plot it on the line so we can track, hey, how this device is read. All right. Um, and that's what that would look like. Right. Reproducibility of results, um, purchasing reagent strips and controls and quantities to enable healthcare workers to use consistent pools of same lots, uh, preventative maintenance of each POCT instrument critical for accurate results. Right. Um, and again, here we're still talking about the importance. Still talking about the importance of this device giving us the appropriate reading. Okay, how many times can this device reproduce this average reading? All right. Routine cleaning of POCT instruments, avoids transmission of none. Uh, nosocomial infections. Use a clean cleaning tissue with a disinfectant 5% bleach solution. Uh, strictly follow healthcare institutions policy to disinfect analyzers and meters. All right. Blood gas and uh, electrolyte analysis. Blood gas analysis involve measurements of uh, PO2, PCO2, and pH. The, P the PO2 and PCO2 analyzers um, are analyzed whenever a patient has a heart or lung disorder. Right? Um, the blood pH determines whether the blood is too acidic or too alkaline. Right? Right. POC instruments can also measure your blood electrolyte levels, your sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium. Uh, glucose, lactate, and hemoglobin. These electrolytes measurements needed immediately in critical care situations. All right. So we know that um, that these levels, why these levels are important. Well, some of us do because everyone hasn't been here the entire time. But when with every beat of the heart, there's an exchange of potassium and sodium. All right. So your sodium and potassium levels get off that leads to the the discrepancies that we see on the EKG machine. I mean, on our EKG readings. Now, this is why we have the widened QRS complex or the PR or, um, or the inverted P wave and things of that nature, all right? It's because the potassium, uh, the sodium potassium exchange is off, all right? Now, when the sodium potassium exchange is off, it can cause things such as like your calcium to build up like in your body and you uh when that calcium starts to build up around your heart like that's not good all right so now once the calcium builds up around the heart they uh you know that that can that can cause that that'll cause um problems with within itself all right so
the roast trump and tea uh oh let me go back uh point of care testing for acute heart damage the roast trump t uh trump sensitive rapid essay um is a measure measurement of your trope and tea to detect heart damage all right so natural this should be done in the event that um we believe that someone has a myocardial um has has an mi all right All right, WBC. Uh, HemoQ WBC system has a POC test system for the uh, determination of the WBC count for a patient. POC analyzer requires only 10 um, ULs of whole blood from a finger stick or a venous EDT sample. All right, blood coagulation monitoring, immediate. Immediate results used in controlling bleeding or clotting disorders in patients. Uh, Quag U check, XS system, um, ITC proton, microcoagulation system, uh, Accuate activated clotting time test, or a lower N ratio 2 meter. I have never worked with any of these machines. All right, hematocrit, hemoglobin, and other hematology parameters. The hematocrit, the ACT packed cell volume, represents volume in volume of circulating blood occupied by red blood cells, excuse me, if expressed as a percentage values obtained to aid in diagnosis and evaluation of anemia. All right, um, I believe I shared this in a class one day when, the, when we were doing the labs here recently. Um, the hematocrit machine, well, the hemostat, um, the machine used to read your hematocrit levels. Um, you have to have a license to use this machine. While the machine itself is digital and you don't have to physically read it anymore, you still have to have a license. In the state of Louisiana, you have to have a license to read this machine. And again, it's going, it's going to read it to you. It's just like the... Uh, just like a glucose meter all right you put the drop of blood on there push the button but in a split second it's going to tell you it's going to tell you your uh your levels all right um and you also have um uh, saying the other machine isn't coming isn't coming to me right now um with a capillary sample so what you do, you put it after you put it in a centrifuge, and you send the capillary specimen down. Um, it usually takes like a minute. So what you do, you put it, you put the specimen on. Well, first you have to check and make sure that you can see through the plasma um, in the capillary tube. You definitely want to make sure that it's not is not lipemic, because if the capillary specimen is lipemic, then you can't use it. All right. So you might as well just go ahead and just prepare yourself mentally to have this conversation with the patient because they're going to be mad, all right? They're going to have to change their schedule around again <clears throat> to come back and have this test redone. All right, so, but if you can see through it, you'll put it on, you'll put it down on the, on the machine, name still hasn't come to me, <coughs> excuse me. And you will press the button where you have to read, there's a, a sliding mechanism. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not Corona, guys. I promise. It's talking a little too much. Um, there's a sliding mechanism. I'm gonna try to find a a picture and show it to you all. Uh, 
put the capillary tube on there. You will slide the the reader to the edge of the to where the red blood cells begin. You will push the button to mark it, and you will slide it all the way over to where the blood um where the blood to the, where the red blood cells meet the serum. Push that again, and then from there where the red blood cell and the serum meet to the end where the serum meets. All right, and you have to record those levels. They have to be within a certain range. All right. Um, blood collection usually occurs by skin puncture. Plastic microcapillary tubes are used. Uh, hemoglobin more accurate than hematocrit. Um, safer blood to detect anemia. Safer method to detect anemia. Excuse me. So Hema Q, you know that already. Um, Kim Carr cholesterol test provides for semi quantitative uh, quantitative estimates of total cholesterol in three minutes using a single drop of whole blood. Use a finger stick drop of finger stick drop of blood total cholesterol or TC values obtained HDL cholesterol and non HDL cholesterol. LDL cholesterol and triglycerides measured in five minutes from blood sample sizes of 40 micro microliters of whole blood using a lower chlor stretch LDX system. All right, other POC tests and future trends. Uh, the belly check measures the belly rubin in newborns. Measurements conducted through the uh, neonatal um, skin. Uh, no blood is collected. I mean that that'll kind of work just like uh, the the vein identifier. Um, HIV test on a USB USB stick. Um, drop of blood to detect HIV creates an electronic signal read by computer, um, computer laptop or handheld device. It is a disposable test. Nova Biomedical uh, Smart Sensor Pointer Care creates a uh, Creatinine and EGFR handheld EGFR analyzers available for whole blood uh, creatinine testing. Um, healthcare workers must learn blood collection equipment, preventative maintenance, quality control, and facial controls, and facial control requirements, ethical and legal implications, record keeping and calibration requirements, right? Essentially, the only thing this right here just said, all seven of these bullet points is saying that you need to learn everything that we talked about in chapters uh, four, three, two, and one. I believe this. That's what we got all. Uh, uh, 10 and 11 as well. All right. So, again, I've already expressed, expressed to you all. Um, again, some of you all may, some of you all are new. Because we had some more students join. Um, a great deal of the, a great deal of the exam is Infection control, all right, and knowing your equipment, knowing the order of draw. All right, so it's imperative that you guys study these things. All right, and that wraps up chapter 14.